you need to send one or more files from your host to your virtual machine. Here's an easy way to do it. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial we will send files of any size from our host to our guest in VirtualBox without the need to set up shared folders or devices by creating our own ISO file using free tools downloaded from the web and attaching it as a virtual optical disk. If you'd prefer to share files through a very simple extension of your virtual machine's networking capabilities, be sure to check out our tutorial shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video, in which we use a bridge networking solution to transfer files in both directions between host, guest and other machines on the same network. And for more tutorials like this one, check out our back catalogue and subscribe for new regular content. We begin by downloading Burnaware Free from the link shown on screen now and reproduced in the written description. This free software will help us create an ISO from our collection of files. Despite the implication in its name, we don't have to burn anything and our objective here is to create an ISO file rather than burn to disk, although we briefly also cover disk burning later in the tutorial. We click the download link. From our available options we select Burnaware Free and whilst there are also paid versions available, the free tool offers everything we need for this and other projects. We are transferred to File Forum and the downloading process begins immediately. Once downloaded, we click to run and where user account control interjects, we click yes to provide our consent to proceed. At the language selection screen, we accept the default English by clicking OK, noting the option to change languages via the drop down. The installation wizard opens and we click next to proceed. Acceptance is compulsory at the license agreement screen and we tick the box labelled I accept the agreement before clicking next to advance. For simplicity, we could accept the default installation location by selecting next. Alternatively, we can browse for a custom path and with our custom path added, we click next to be taken to our start menu options, where again we opt for the defaults by selecting next. We also accept the defaults at the additional task screen, once more clicking next. We are presented with a summary of our installation options and click install to commence the installation. Whilst we've been conditioned to a routine of accepting defaults and clicking next, the two screens which follow serve as a reminder to remain focused, as accepting the defaults here will potentially lead to the installation of unwanted software. Be sure to decline any bundled software which you don't specifically want and untick pre-selected installations which are entirely separate from Burnaware. Be advised that your screens may differ from ours as different software will be bundled. We remain very disappointed with this deceptive advertising practice and would urge everyone to decline bundled software before advancing. With the option safely unticked, we click next and with the option to launch ticked, we click finish. The main interface launches with a web page displayed in the background. We subsequently close the background page, returning to the main interface where we select the option to make ISO. By following the options here, we will create a single ISO file which we can copy and paste as with any other file, or burn to disk, or mount as a virtual optical disk in VirtualBox. Our ISO requires a name and we arbitrarily name it Tutorials. This name will appear in File Explorer windows as the disk title. We now have a blank virtual optical disk to which we can add one or more files. We select the option labelled Add Files. The selection dialog appears and we navigate to the files we wish to add, which can be stored across multiple locations. We navigate to a folder containing our video files, selecting the files which we wish to incorporate into the ISO, clicking Add. The files are now added to a list of those which will be included once the finalised ISO is created. At this stage, we could add more from elsewhere on our machine. Notice that our virtual disk is already full and we can click the drop down to reveal a selection of media types. Where we ultimately look to burn to a physical disk, respecting the capacity limits of the media will be important and we may need to delete files to respect the size of the disk. However, where we have no intention of producing a physical disk, such considerations don't apply. We therefore select a Blu-ray, allowing us to create a virtual disk of up to 25GB in size. In doing so, we return to the blue, as our virtual Blu-ray is more than sufficiently sized to accommodate our files. We click the option to make. We now need to navigate to the location where our finalised ISO file will be saved. We also provide a name for our saved file and click save, which begins the creation process. This may take some time, varying with the quantity of files included and the speed of your processor and drives. 
We are presented with a summary and we click to advance. We are returned to the creation dialog where we could potentially create another disc or make modifications before creating a further ISO. Closing this screen returns us to the main interface. Opening our documents folder, we can see our saved ISO file. Opening it reveals that it contains our video files. Now let's use the file by attaching it to a virtual machine in VirtualBox as a virtual optical disc. We return to the VirtualBox interface and if you need any assistance in downloading and installing VirtualBox, see the tutorial shown on screen now and linked in the written description. We right click our virtual machine, selecting settings from the menu which appears. We move from general settings to storage, where by default our virtual optical drive is empty. We click the drop down menu and select the option to choose virtual optical disk file. We then simply navigate to the ISO file we created using Burnaware. With the file selected, we click open, mounting the ISO to the virtual optical drive. We now run our virtual machine and in this instance we are running a Windows guest. This PC shows a new virtual optical disk named Tutorials, as per the name we applied when creating the ISO. Opening the disk, we can view its content. As with a regular optical disk, this is a read-only medium from which we can transfer files to our virtual hard drive, making them editable. To eject our virtual disk, we simply return to the drop-down menu and select the option to remove disk from virtual drive. For more regular and comprehensive file sharing between host, guest and other machines on the network, we recommend the tutorial shown on screen now and in the written description. We also make use of Burnaware as well as other free utilities in our three part Ditch the Disc series in which we create a full digital library of our music, movies, games and more, consigning our original disc to the archives whilst creating a fully accessible digital duplicate, again linked in the description. What if we want to create a physical disk from the ISO files we've created? We return to Burnaware, selecting the option to burn ISO. The burn image dialog appears and we click browse to select the ISO file which we've created. At the open dialog, we select our file and click to open it. In doing so, we note that this selection of files would more than fill the default selected media, which is a CD. From the drop down menu, we change this to DVD, making sure that we insert a recordable DVD into our PC's DVD drive. We then click to burn. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.